Okay, so I uh, started graphing this rational function with these guys, and then they reminded me that I should probably record. So here I am recording. Uh, the, today's lesson is going to be 7.2, day one, which is actually about how we make real-world problems that can then turn into rational functions. But we graphed them yesterday, so we're practicing a little bit of graphing of a rational function. And why was I sticking in zero for all the x's? Because that gives you the y-intercept. That's where x equals zero. So we figured out the y-intercept, and we figured out the x-intercept. The x-intercept is where y is zero, and that's what made the top zero. So we found these two spots were x-intercepts, and if you just think about it, of course that's a y-intercept. And now this is another weird thing. There could only be one y-intercept. Why? Because if there was another one, it wouldn't be a function. Exactly. Okay, so there's always going to be, at most, one y-intercept. Is it possible that it wouldn't touch at all on this whole line? Yeah, if there was an asymptote right there, it wouldn't touch at all on that line. Okay, so now back to, we've got a couple points, but that doesn't, that alone doesn't tell me at all what my graph looks like. Okay, but I probably should get some other points, which will be an xy chart, and some asymptotes in here. All right, the asymptotes come from this. The bottom is the vertical asymptotes. And the verticals are the ones that go up and down, all right? And they're the vertical asymptotes. Why do I do that? So you can remember you're finding x equal things, okay? And what x equal things will make it crash? Because that's what an asymptote is. It's a spot where the function would crash. Please tell me you knew a couple x equals things that would make it crash. Yes. Tell me. The one girl who had a hand up. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Negative 3 and negative 7. Excellent. So negative 3, the dot, dotted line right down here at negative 3. I'm going to call it negative 3. And here's negative 7. Raise your hand if you had dotted lines in there. Good. Okay. Next, we have to find the horizontal asymptotes. For horizontals, we consult Bob. Is this a bigger on bottom, bigger on top, or same on both? It's the same on both. Okay, because this is an x squared lead, and this is also an x squared lead. And if it's a same on both, that's the ratio of the lead coefficients, which is a 1 and a 1. So it's a y equals 1. How come I know it's y equals? Because it's a horizontal asymptote. All right, y equals 1. So there's a dotted line running across here now at y equals 1. Why 1 again? Because it was a ratio of these lead coefficients, because it was the same on both. All right, so I'm getting there. Now I need to figure out what the rest of this graph looks like. And my guess is that this is going to have some kind of a uh, uh, asymptote that goes, no, actually, I know it's not up there, because if it was, then these points down here would have to be messed up. Now, it's a little weird that there's two things uh, that makes this equation zero. And I'm just double checking that. And yeah, if I put in one, it for sure makes the equation zero. And therefore, it's a x-intercept. And zero also makes this equation equal zero. I'm just double checking that. Yep, it has to go through both of them. Not sure exactly how, but I'll get there eventually. All right, so let's next find a few more points. Do you agree that somewhere in between here, which was 3 and 7, negative 3 and negative 7, we should probably find a point that's somewhere in there. So what's an x value that's between negative 3 and negative 7? Yes? Negative 6. Negative 6. All right, if I'm going to put in negative 6, I actually need to make my xy chart put in negative 6 and see what it looks like. So I'm going to put in a negative 6 in every spot where there's an x and see what I get. That's negative 6 times negative 7 on the top, which makes negative 42, over negative 6 plus 3, which is negative 3. And that's negative 4, which makes positive 12. Do you get my answer? Is a negative... Oh, right. double check it. Positive 12. Negative 6 times negative 7 is 42. Okay, okay, hold on. On the bottom here. All right, wait. On the top is positive 42. 
because it was a negative times a negative, right? So that's positive 42. And that's negative 3 times, oh, sorry, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. That's how it's negative. But it is negative, but it's not, wasn't what I said. So negative what? Let me think. 7 times this is 8. 9 times 3 is 27. 10, 11, is it 14? Awesome. Thank you. So negative 14. Now, if I actually graph that, negative 6, negative 14. That's basically way down here. Do you get that this tells me it can't be up here also? Otherwise, again, it wouldn't pass the vertical line test. I know it has to stay in this little area right here is where my graph is going to have to exist. Next thing. I don't know if you're going to get this or not, but if it's down here, it's also going to have to come up here, turn around and come back down. Why? Because it needs to get closer and closer to the asymptotes, and that's the only way that it can do it. If I wanted to find a few more points, it's not that hard. I'm going to stick in another number. What's also between negative 3 and negative 7? Negative 6 was, how about negative 5 maybe? I stick in negative 5. I figure out where it is. It'll come out somewhere on this line. Not exactly, maybe. I could, could have made my loop a little too high, for instance. But All right, next I want to figure out, is it in this zone or this zone? I don't know. How many think it's in zone A versus B? Anybody try something out there? Do you think it's in A? You think it's in A? All right. Then let's try something. What's something that's bigger than negative 7 like? What did you guys try? Negative 8? I like it. So if we put in negative 8, let's put it in and see what we get. Negative 8, negative 8, negative 8. This comes out to negative 8, negative 9. Uh, that makes 72. Positive 72 over, that's negative 5 and negative 1 positive 5, 72 fifths, whatever the heck that is. And it is positive. So you are correct. It's up in this zone. If it's up in this zone, I know it has to look like that. Exactly where does it touch? Well, I, this. Somebody, what is 72 divided by 5? What exactly is that? Thank you. So then I could take negative 8, comma, 14.4, and I'm guessing that's up here somewhere. Yes. For the, uh, or for the right mouse, uh, for this area. Have you figured that out? Because I haven't figured it out yet. Okay. No, I, I, don't read. No reason to be sorry. I, I haven't figured out why these are exactly lined up in a straight line here. I'm not sure exactly why that's happening, but I'm hopefully I'll figure it out. All right. I'm going to check by sticking in x equals one into my original equation, which has gotten hideous. I'm going to need to pause for a second while I clean that up. Okay, so we're going to check and try to figure out what's going on here. Again, my theory is it goes something like this, but I can't understand why it touches two spots. And, and i got to figure out what's exactly between 0 and 1, because maybe there's a dot that's exactly on the line again. Maybe it goes for a straight line for a minute there, which is legal. You can have a straight line this way. That's not illegal in a function. Yes? Okay, so the theory, the question was, what do we get when we put in 0.5? All right, you have something to say? You got negative 0.01, so a little tiny negative, is that kind of what you were saying you got, a little tiny negative? All right, I can believe that. So apparently this graph makes a little tiny dip right there and then goes back down again. has to go down. Why? Because it can't leave this whole area. It can't leave that area because it's got like a fence around it. You can't go through asymptotes. You know what I mean? So it has to stay in there. And it has to, in the end, get closer and closer to the asymptote. On this end, I know it has to get closer and closer to the asymptote. I would have not marked anything wrong in that zone because that's kind of a weird little place in the graph. It's got a little dip in there. I'll clean it up so you can see it better.
what we were saying is we know it goes through here. We know it goes through here. These guys said it went through a, a little bit of a negative number, so that means it went down. That means it has to eventually has to go up closer and closer to 1, and eventually it has to end getting closer and closer to uh, x equals negative. Uh, what is that, negative 3, I think? Uh, and my axis moved over a little bit, which isn't that big of a deal. But Okay. Actually, it was like... Oh. Okay. Got kind of crazy, but here's the final result. Asymptote was a big deal. Asymptote was a big deal. Asymptote was another big deal. Then, I knew there were some points in here. Did you get as soon as I know there's some points in there? It has to generally go like that. I knew there was some points that were in this little cage here. And so generally it had to go like that. And then lastly, we figured out that the, there was a point that was in this area. That means it generally has to go like that. And that's it. Why can't there be something like up here? Wouldn't pass a vertical line test. Yes? Okay. Great. All right. Then I think it's time to tell you uh, that what, we, what we've told you before, I happen to, when I put that one up there, pick the one exception, and I've been lying to you this whole time. You could still kind of generally assume this, but they can actually cross the asymptotes in rare circumstances. And I know you hate to hear things like that. It's sort of like saying that, um, you know, like you can cross the street without looking sometimes. Like your mommy always told you never cross the street without looking, but there's actually times it's okay. No, that's wrong. Okay. Uh, how about, how about, um, you can never take a left turn on red, correct? Oh, no, you actually can. Only if it's on to a one way. Okay, so anyway, there's exceptions to every rule. You can sometimes cross the asymptotes. If the, in certain weird situations. Okay, so I'm sorry I gave you a really tough one there. And, uh, if this one does cross the asymptote, then I'm guessing what happened was that in this little zone here, we know it hits here and here because we tested. We knew it hit here and here. My guess is this did a little dipsy do and then went up like that, which can happen in rare circumstances. Okay, now I have to, if you got the asymptotes in the right place, and you get the x-axis. Oh, you use Desmos. Okay, cool. Now we know for sure. All right. Um, it, it wasn't just staying down in his little cage. Usually they do. That's one of those like things that usually is an assumption you can make. All right. So back to, uh, I tested in this little area, and there was a point up here. So I generally know it's going to be like that. And don't, don't just, because this did a weird thing right here, and like, breaks a rule that you thought was hard and fast that you can't cross the asymptotes. It doesn't mean everything you've learned about asymptotes is wrong. They almost always will follow the rules I've told you. But that's why you test points. And I'm glad somebody tested a point and found out it went up. All right. And again, it's, it's not like it's illegal for you to check your work on Desmos either. That's awesome. I'm glad you did that. Because when you're learning this stuff, you can look at the graph and go, okay, what about this makes sense? I'm looking at my Desmos answer. And there is an answer key posted for most of our homework, too. Was there an answer key for last night's? Just making sure that they're there. Yes, some kids can verify that they found it. Good. All right. Now, enough about sketching these things, which can be a real pain in the butt, especially if we ever uh, get into this weird crosses the asymptote thing. But now let's talk about something completely different. This is completely different. Except that when you write the equations for them, they come out to rational functions. And therefore, it's pertinent to now. All right, so what's a rational function again? Something that has a what involved in it. Rational, do you even know what kind of function we're talking about here? Fractions, fractions. Rational numbers can be written as fractions. That's why it's called rational functions, because these are fraction functions. All right, so what's a fraction you see in real life? You don't probably see it running around as a fraction, but when I start walking around the room, I've got a rate associated with this. Isn't that a fraction, like miles per hour? Maybe I was walking at one mile per hour. Okay, that's a fraction. So we use rates in these problems to get us into word problems that have 
fractions in them so that then you can say, okay, this is a good time to do some word problems on fractions. Okay, so what's a typical fraction? Let's make a, uh, a, a real world problem you can probably relate to. Um, I don't know, it, I don't even want to ask, but some of you probably are lucky enough that your parents don't make you do anything around the house. But for me, I had to do something. And my kids, I made them do something around the house. That was their job. Like taking out the trash or the, somebody was doing the laundry or somebody else had to mow the lawn or whatever. Didn't have to do tons of work, but there was some work associated, okay? When I was a kid, my dad said, I want you to spend an hour, just an hour, pulling weeds in the backyard because we had this thing called Creeping Charlie. I don't know if any of you guys have that weed in your backyard. It's really a pain in the butt. Almost impossible to get rid of. You can spray it. It doesn't die. It's just frustrating. Anyway, so you have me pull weeds. And you just, oh, it's just plain old-fashioned. You know what the plant looks like. You find one, you grab it, you pull it out of the ground. Do you get that if I did pull like five weeds a minute, that's, that's actually possible. It's not that hard. You grab them, you pull them out. They're not like buckthorn or anything that's impossible to pull out. So if my rate for weed pulling was five weeds per minute, do you get if I have some other person working with me? Let's say I convince my friend, hey, I'll pay you to pull weeds with me so I can get this over with quicker, okay? I offer my, my friend like five bucks to come and pull weeds with me. And let's say he's really good at pulling weeds and his weed pulling rate he's just like faster than me he's like eight weeds per minute do you get the together together we can pull more weeds you know we can pull rate that we can pull weeds faster together okay our together rate would be how many weeds per minute what's that it's a good question so do you think we together are pulling weeds at an average of five and eight, or do you think we are together pulling weeds at an at, at, at a, not an average, at a rate together of 13 weeds per minute? All right, so here's the key for this whole thing, and I'm gonna come back to it over and over again. It's always gonna come down to a rate plus a rate will equal a rate. I know that's dumb, but write that down. Rate plus rate equals rate because that's what it's always gonna boil down to. So if I do five weeds per minute, and then I add my friend on together, then together we are pulling 13 weeds per minute. It's not that complicated. We just take the rate plus the rate will equal the rate. Can we make it more advanced than that? Of course we can. This is honors pre -calc. You're not just gonna have this plus this. All right, so let's say that I am pulling weeds uh, at five, Per minute and I need to pull and I need to pull a total of uh, 180 weeds you can pretty quickly figure out how long it's going to take me to do that right would you take a moment and figure that out and I'll give you a hint DRT distance equals rate times time is kind of like this except this isn't about distance Figure out what to do to figure out how long will it take me to pull all those weeds by myself. Pause for a minute while you work with your partner. Figure out the answer. Right, actually, write it down. Figure out what you did. Did you multiply them? Did you divide them? Did you, what do you do? All right, so uh, five words per minute, 180 weeds. What would you do? Did you multiply them? Or did you divide them? All right, and what did you get? All right. Do you get how that involved division, once again, involving a fraction? I could show you as a multiplication of 1 over 180 or whatever, but this is, it's still, in the end, it's a fraction function. Uh, and then how many hours did it take me, or how many minutes did it take me? 36 minutes. All right, and what we're going to get to is like, okay, let's say you and a, and a friend together did it in 26 minutes. Then how fast was your friend picking? Do you get what I'm saying? It doesn't tell you how fast your friend picked. It tells you you got done faster because you had a friend. And then you got to back it out and figure out how fast was your friend picking the weeds with you. I'll teach you how to do that after the weekend. So right now, if I can just get you to practice one more difficult, well, not difficult, but, you know, medium at least, uh, word problem from today's. Uh, I'm going to find one that's a good one. And we're going to end with that uh, today.
Oh, give me a second here to find the right one. All right, so here's number 20. Uh, for those on the video, we're doing number 20 right now. Uh, it's one of the ones from, it's earlier in the slide deck. I think it's on page five. And uh, it's from yesterday's homework, one I did not assign yesterday. It says hint divide. I don't think you need to do that. Uh, I think you can do this the way I showed you before. All right. So the first uh, question is horizontal asymptote. All right. So where, or first of all, tell me how you figured out the horizontal asymptote. It's the same on both. Some would argue it's bigger on top, but they'd be wrong. How do you decide it's same on both? Power of one, the degree is one. I agree, it's the same on both. And therefore, it's a ratio of the, the coefficients, the lead coefficients. And that would be three and a one. And so therefore, it's y equals three, you are correct. There we go. That's a horizontal asymptote. Okay, dice of destiny, who's gonna tell me something more about this graph? It's row two, last person. Tell me something more. I agree, because of that, we have a vertical asymptote at 2. How many of you guys had it framed up correctly? Okay, good. Now, generally, generally, do you get it's probably going to be something like that? you got to keep that perspective that it's probably going to be something like that, except maybe, maybe it's 2 going up like this, or maybe it's here and here. But one thing it could not possibly be, it would be here and there, because then it wouldn't pass the what? Vertical line test. Okay, so now let's figure out where exactly is it. Who could tell me more? If I could tell an X intercept or a Y intercept, that'd be pretty handy. Yes? Hit me, Mr. L. It has a uh, Y intercept of seven halves. Y intercept of seven halves. That's about three and a half. So that's about here. Do you get that means, if he's right, that it must probably do that? How many of you guys got, guys got the same thing? Okay, cool. Then, dies of destiny. Row six, last person. Tell me, LC, what do you think is another dot that's on this graph? The x-intercept was? All right. The x-intercept is where y equals zero, and so that means this needs to equal zero, so you'd have this little equation, 3x minus 7 equals zero. x equals 7 thirds. Is that what you did? Awesome. And what is 7 thirds? It's about 2.3. So then that's about there-ish. Do you get that means? It probably goes like that. If I wanted to get more points to make sure I was on the right track, to get an XY chart would be in order. Did anybody actually make an XY chart? All right, your group's pass. Everybody else fails. I'm just teasing. You should have that, though, because you don't just want to trust a couple points. You want to find a few more. Okay. Enjoy no homework. That's all I got for you for today.